If you remember back in video number 37, we did a teardown of this Hewlett Packard model 14A vacuum tube voltmeter. So today I thought I would go ahead and start doing the uh, restoration process to get this meter back up and running again. And the meter still tore down quite a bit from our previous teardown. So uh, I thought we'd get a look at a few of the things that needs to be done to it and uh, see if we can get this old meter back up and running. Our capacitors for this restore was provided by JustRadios.com. They have a great selection of capacitors there, so if you haven't checked them out before, I'll leave a link below. www.JustRadios.com They are radio restorers and collectors that sell, and they have a great selection of uh, capacitors and resistors and schematics and a few other things, so be sure to check them out. Now if you remember before we had found this extra circuit that was in our 410A that we weren't quite sure what it was consists of a 6-4 a little power transformer, a variable resistor there is a uh, diode under here, precision diode and there's a couple of caps under the bottom and we weren't quite sure just what this circuit was doing um, I think we had some understanding of what was going on but it is a uh, circuit that is added on into the machine and if you remember we have a pair of those iMac tubes one here in the machine and one in the probe and what this circuit does is a balance circuit and it takes care of a few voltage issues so that you do not have to have a match pair of those iMac tubes that you can use just any iMac tube if they're matched or not and Mike over at Mike's Radio Repair um, provided us with the schematic and the um, information on this circuit so that will help us a whole lot in getting this uh, circuit up back and running one of the capacitors under here one of them is a .25 microfarad and the other one the um, value rating has been rubbed off of it was you know due to age and when I went to order these parts and you know the capacitors I could not figure out what this was and it does not check correctly on my capacitor tester so the capacitor is definitely bad in fact it does have a hole burnt through it so that capacitor did not get ordered so I've had to either you know order it or see can I find a substitution here in the shop but uh, I'll be uploading these documents on my website so they'll be free to download and uh, props to Mike for uh, going online and finding this and purchasing it and sending us copies so since this um, piece of equipment is not going to get a museum restoration it's going to get a working restoration and what that is is that we're going to put this thing back together so that it can be used and used for what it's intended for not to just sit on the shelf and look pretty so one thing I got to do is go in and clean all these wafer switches and uh, check all the values of these resistors and make sure they are within spec we have a few sealed potentiometers that we'll have to go into and clean also there's several bare wires inside the machine that we'll have to take care of um, we have to check these mica caps. So basically, we're going to clean this with a toothbrush and some cleaning fluid. And uh, I'm not going to do a complete tear it apart and you know and clean the wafer switches like we did in one of our other videos. Because like I say, this unit is going to be put back together to go back in service. Um, we're going to have to dress, put a new power cord in. We know some of our leads are in pretty bad shape so uh, we're going to have to replace them the DC probe and our AC probe uses double shielded cable the cable is not in bad shape I might can clean it up it's a little bit stiff but after maybe we do put some dressing on it maybe it will uh, you know free back up and and be all right to use if not I'm have to go online and see if I can't find a few feet of this uh, 
double shielded cable. So right on the get go, one of the first things I'm about to tackle is this potentiometer here on the back. It no longer turns, it is completely stuck. In fact, if you look at the uh, the shaft, you can see where the knob has just been spinning around on it. And this resistor is completely froze up. So we're going to take this off and uh, take it apart and see what we can find. So I have the potentiometer removed. And you know, we probably could just replace this, but uh, we might as well see if we can fix it. For I like to try to use all original stuff that I can use. So, But we can see that this shaft does not turn at all. So to get into this, we have a little grounding tab here that we're going to bend up. And then we're going to pry this cap off. So we got our tab lifted up and I went around the edge of it with a very small screwdriver. So we should be able to lift this right off of it. And there's a little gasket inside. So now we can get a good look at it, the inside of this potentiometer. And it looks very clean inside. So our problem is, is probably here in the shaft where moisture and dirt has got into the uh, the shaft and, and in between the uh, mount here and it's corroded and froze together. And what I'm going to use to try to free this up is, uh, is WD-40. Now WD-40 is not a great lubricator. It is a great cleaner. So it'll help get in there and, and loosen up some of this stuff. And we'll pour this little C-clip off. And uh, see, can't we get this thing freed up? So by going here and just basically pushing in on the back of the potentiometer center, we're able to lift this up and then get something under here to work our little clip ring loose. So now we can slide this off and work this shaft out. We might take some sandpaper and go around the, the shaft so that it does not scar up the inside of the barrel. And as you can see our shaft is out with a wiper. And you can look and you can see how dirty the shaft is. From old dried up grease and uh, dirt and moisture getting into it. And we'll just, you know, clean this up real good and uh, clean up the inside of the, uh, the center mount. And that should take care of this. rest of it looks pretty good. And there we have it. The unit is now clean and rotates freely. Now all I got to do is put the back back on, and this part is done. So on to the next. So much more to do. All right, I have our potentiometer mounted back on the rear, and I think now what we need to address is what's left of our old power cord. And as you can see up in here, we have two paper caps. These are 0.01 at 600 volts. So while we're in here replacing these caps, we're going to go ahead and take the uh, old power cord loose and we're going to install a new three wire power cord. Um, yes, this one does use three wires, it has a ground. So that's our next attempt. Okay, I've got a meter broke apart some, and you can see inside here there's a grounding lug, and it hooks to the bottom of this transformer. I went ahead and removed this because this is one of our 0.01 capacitors goes to ground here, and the other one ties here also. But I've cut it loose and moved it out of the way, and it goes down to the hot side of the power switch. 
So in this way, by knowing this, we're able to go ahead and get to both of these capacitors and go ahead and replace them so we can get the uh, power wires at the same time because they hook to both of our AC lines. You also notice our new capacitors are a lot smaller than the old ones. And if you notice, there's a black mark on one end of this capacitor. And this shows the outside force in the, the capacitor. If you're not re familiar with finding the polarity of a non-polarized capacitor, I'll link down below a video to uh, Paul of at Mr. Carson's lab that shows how to do this. And what this does, this lead is connected to the four on the outside and this end connects to your higher impedance circuit. Also since the uh, capacitors are a lot smaller we'll be using some spaghetti dressing on the leads so that nothing can be shorted out against the lead as things you know are moved around inside. So when we install our new capacitor you notice I have our spaghetti dressing on here and I've Leave about an eighth of an inch from the end before I made the pin. And why is this is when I hook to the lug, I can fold this over and solder to it, and that'll leave enough room to clear off dressing. So, as you can see, we got our capacitor and our white power lead securely directly to the back of the switch. Now, we'll uh, take the other capacitor loose. And it's connected to the uh, voltage rectifier tube down on the bottom, and we'll get the uh, new capacitor and the black wire connected to it. So, our next item we need to address is our meter. As you can see, it's very dirty. So, we're going to take the meter apart. And if you look, the movement seems to be fine. There's a little brown spot inside I need to address. As you can see, it's right there. I need to find out why that is. Got that little brown spot in there. And when we got it took it apart, we'll uh, check this mica cap. I'm pretty sure it's okay. It's not a lot of voltage on this meter, but we definitely will replace this electrolytic on the back. And this was an old Mallory, 50 microfarads at 50 volts. So we'll go ahead and replace this while we're at it. And in the meantime, we'll put on some shorter leads. I'll have our face removed from my meter and we can remove the glass. And uh, clean that real good and clean the whole outside of the case. And what I'll clean this... Uh, bake like material with is uh, there's a small crack there but I think that'll be alright but we'll clean it with Gojo and a toothbrush for the inspection uh, this uh, meter face is made out of metal that's painted over so we'll probably take some uh, warm water and a soft cloth and uh, soak this and, and wash it off. You don't want to use any detergents or anything on this because you can take the lettering off. To remove our meter face all we do is just remove the two screws and slide the face up off the meter. Be very careful when you're working in this area you know look around look for any debris or anything in it. I actually put this under the microscope and look for tin whiskers or anything that uh, you know could get in the way to obstruct the, the metal movement and what tin whiskers is is when metal it grows little metal whiskers out from it and they can cause all kinds of problems I'm not seeing this in, in, in this meter so it looks good so if I meter out I'll just go uh, wash this up and get this clean and put all this back together and we should be good on it We have our meter finished up, and uh, I've got the uh, new 50 microfarad, 50 volt capacitor installed, and the uh, micro 
capacitor checked out with no problems. This is the uh, old 50 volt, 50 microfarad capacitor. As you can see it's electrolytic, paper covered. When I checked this capacitor, it checked at 105 microfarads and had an ESR of about 9 ohms. So, uh, yeah, it uh, definitely was in need of a replacement. It was way out of spec. Now, as you can see, our new capacitor is uh, very small. A lot smaller than what the original one was. Someone asked me what do I use to uh, bring the knobs back to, um, you know, to make them look new. And what I use is either Gojo or a hand cleaner called Goop. Either one is basically the same. But usually what I do is uh, just pick out a knob, put a little hand cleaner on the uh, a toothbrush, and just work it in. Doesn't take a whole lot. help get all that dead material off even to the back side and we'll let that sit for a few minutes and there we have our good clean knobs and uh, if you look on top of like this one does some little scratches here in the center and also on this large knob now what you can do is use a product for cars called total wax I'm sure everybody's familiar with that and you can buff these out on a buffing pad with total wax and they will become very shiny and look real nice and I'll end up doing these and when I do I'll show you the after picture of it another thing you can do with a gojo like this uh, 6AG72 from Sylvania and it's kind of got a, a dirty film all over it and you know it's just lost its lux luster so put a little gojo on it nice and clean no problems at all one thing is uh, you can see how dirty looking our transformer is now you know I could pull the transformer out and you know give it a good shot of, uh, of black paint but uh, again this is not a, going to be a showpiece of equipment you know it's going to be a working piece of equipment we just go right over top of it some all hand cleaner that'll break all of those years of dust settling down on it it also loosen up any rust that's formed up on it
So what does that tell us? That give that gives us a vintage piece of equipment that's clean and not, you know, modified. And you know, I expect a piece of equipment that's vintage to look like a piece of vintage equipment, not a new piece of equipment. And this is just how I like to do my own stuff. Now, if I was doing this for somebody else, you know. They want the transformer painted, and yes, I'll take the transformer out and paint it. For my own stuff, I like originality. I've laid the unit on the side, and I removed this bottom plate. And the reason I've done this because it makes it easier to get onto our diode circuit modification board. And this way, I can go ahead and replace these two caps. Check this resistor while I'm under there, and uh, this is a crystal diode it should be okay but we'll you know i'll check it and i wanted to clean this uh potentiometer and retention the uh the contact on it plus it'll give me the opportunity to go ahead and clean the, the inside of this bottom unit and get some of this crud off of it and when i'll stand off is loose so now we can get in here and tighten this up also this allows me access to under here to uh inspect this wiring and see if I can clean up the uh, AC and DC probe wiring and soften that rubber up a little bit so that'll be our next step is working on the bottom side of this unit okay we got the uh, diode modification board all complete got it cleaned up with our two new capacitors installed luckily I had a 0.5 microfarad in the drawer I didn't know I had, but got that installed. Doesn't match the other ones, but it checks out and it's good, so no worries. Used a pipe cleaner on the tube sockets, and also I use a drill bit that just does fit into the socket and just take it, run it by hand, and twist it a little bit to clean it out with a pipe cleaner. That gets all the old corrosion out of the tube sockets. Just use a little isopropyl alcohol. Alright, so we'll move on around to the side and see if we can uh, take care of these two naked wires here and dress our AC and DC volt leads. Then we'll move on around to cleaning this wafer switch. So we're at the stage now where all our circuitry is put back together, all our new caps is in. Um, got a fuse holder back in place, our pilot lamps in, all the knobs are on, meters installed, everything's hooked up. Now it's time to, before we go any further, is just do a little testing. And uh, before, when you, when I first got this meter, as soon as you turn it on, the needle in the meter would peg all the way down on the left hand side below zero. And nothing you did controlled or you know you weren't able to do anything with the meter so after the recut cap and the cleaning and checking values of resistors um, before we go any further um, while well, we still got things a little bit loose inside we're gonna plug it into the wall and turn it on and I have a smaller fuse than what needs to be in here in case something catastrophe happens so We'll uh, plug it in and see. Okay, the power strip's on. And we'll come here and we'll turn it on. And we'll just let it warm up a minute. Well, that's already a good indication there. As you can see, our meter is climbing as the tube's warming up. Okay, but we're on DC minus, so uh, the first test that we want to do is see if uh, our zero adjust. down here will make any difference at all so I'm going to let y'all see the meter 
and we're going to rotate the zero adjust and see if that makes a difference. And as you can see, the meter is moving with no problems at all. I'm able to go all the way through the whole scale. And the meter's not bouncing around or, you know, like it's agitated. It's moving freely as the voltage is up and down on that. So the next thing we do, we're going to go up to... Uh, our positive DC voltage and see what the meter does okay and it stayed right on zero so that's good we'll go over to our AC range I'm noticing on the AC range we do have a little bit of fluctuation on the meter so we're going to have to get in there and check out the AC circuit and see if there's a uh, resistor or something in there that we missed we'll go ahead and flip over to the ohm scale I'm still seeing a little fluctuation on that meter and ohm scale. And I'm not quite able to uh, zero it out completely. So I use the zero. The main um, zero adjust and was able to zero it out. So now when we go back to AC the meter is going to be off and that's uh, DC positive DC minus okay I'll go ahead and shut the unit off that's give me enough testing of uh, know what's going on here and I think our problem Oh yeah, look at that meter. Looks pretty good. You can still see that spot just a little bit in there. But uh, it's not much of it left. I didn't want to keep uh, rubbing on it. You know, scared that would take some of the uh, white off. So I just stopped there on it. So here on this side is all our adjustments and you've got several variables and you do have some fixed resistance in here that sets different uh, ranges so we may have to go in here and do a complete calibration and check these resistors um, now just because these resistors are here from the factory doesn't mean that they won't have to be changed some of these are hand selected I've still got to come in here and uh, if you notice our little iMac tube I've still got to come in here and clean this tube and the uh, the holder for it for the uh, terminals because it's still dirty I have not cleaned that yet but that's a, this is about the only part of the cleaning I haven't done yet so we'll get that tube out, get it clean, and uh, we'll go in here and we'll check some values on these resistors. And then we'll see if we can get our meter to uh, stay on zero on each setting as we go through it. So I started checking out a DC probe and I found out that it did not work, regardless of uh, what I was doing. So I started taking it apart, and the first thing this wire slips inside the tube 
and it has this locking collar on the end of it that holds it in place. I quickly found out that the wire was completely broken from the tip. Um, I could not get the tip out. It was supposed to screw out, but it was just locked in there. And what it was, this end had been melted before. So I had to cut this out. As I was cutting it out, I found that the internal resistor inside the DC Pro was completely broken in two. So looking at the schematic, I could not find this resistor in the uh, schematic. It did not show it in the probe. But luckily there's enough uh, color left on here. And you can see it's flaking off pretty bad. Red, red, blue, silver. That's a 22 meg resistor. So I am going to have to construct a new probe. This is now going to be a little bit too short. So I'm going to look around the shop and see what I can find. Maybe I can find another tube about this size and get it back to length that it's supposed to be and build a three of this into it and then uh, cut threads on the other end to hold the wire in because I wanted to really keep the original style old probes as long as they're not in bad shape and could be a uh, safety hazard. We definitely don't want to be using anything that would be a safety hazard. And with this being a little short, it kind of puts you too close to the uh, the voltage that you're checking. Although I'm not going to be checking a lot of high voltage with this, this meter. Uh, you know, probably a couple hundred volts at the most. So, that's something else we got to look at is finding the replacement for this DC Pro. So what I decided to do is that I've cut off a piece of a uh, Virtus rods to open and close your mini blinds with. I've cut a piece off of that and the hole that runs through it I sand at the end smooth is small enough that the tip can be threaded into it. What I'll do, I'll apply a little bit of heat to this and thread it in, and that'll screw in. The next thing, the rest of the hole is too small for the uh, cable to go in. So, what we're going to do is drill out down to about a half inch from the end. So this cable can slide through. And all I've done, I, I used uh, the old piece as a gauge to get the right diameter and then drill this here out. So now our cable will slide through this, but yet our um, tip will still screw into the end of it. The compression nut that goes on the end that holds the cable tight is tapered. So what I've done, I cut across into the end, sanded the end down a little bit, and now able to screw the compression nut onto our test probe. So that should hold our cable in with no problems. Now all I got to do is uh, prep the cable, get another 22 meg ohm resistor, then solder here and then solder it to the cable, slide it in, tighten it up. One thing I liked about this probe, I liked the design of it and the other tip that was in here was very corroded. So now I can just cut a new uh, tip, slide it in screw this compression fitting on and that will take care of our new probe now, I thought about painting it black to match the original 
but I might just leave it the original color. I also sanded down the uh, the edges of it a little bit to give it a more soft feel. The other one was uh, shaped about the same. It's hard to tell with his black. It's like that six-sided probe, and this one was the same way. It's just got an extra few ridges in it. So I think that will be sufficient. And now we're closer and closer to getting our 410A back together. I have been dressing the uh, AC and DC probe leads with uh, hand cleaner. And it has really softened the rubber up quite a bit. If you remember that our ohms lead you know it was in pretty bad shape and also our common lead was just uh, completely gone it's no help in the and the only thing the common lead had was just a uh, broken alligator clip on it you know and that's that's not very functional especially if you need to use it for a test lead if you're you know ground your um, DC voltage lead and you need to test negative circuits you know that's not very good to be testing with and you know getting that kind of voltage on your fingers so I looked at several different options on the uh, the ohms and the the common lead and I remembered I had a I think it was a series 2 Simpson 260 voltmeter that was just completely destroyed it has been left out in the rain with batteries in it corroded and it was a complete failure uh, no way to get it back up and running so it did have a pretty decent set of leads on it so I took them off and uh, soldered them into the uh, the unit <coughs> excuse me and the good thing about it, you know, this is all common lead and we have a alligator clip that's insulated. Plus it also screws off and that gives us a probe for our common lead. And you know, basically the same thing with our own lead. You know, nice insulated alligator clip. And screws off and goes into a probe. So that will help uh, when using it, no, make, makes it a whole lot more convenient. So uh, basically, the meter is, is completely done. The only thing I'm waiting for, I can't believe I have searched and searched and searched in the shop to find a two watt, 22 mega ohm resistor. And this way, we can finish up our DC probe because there's got to be a resistor in between the tip and your lead. And Unfortunately, I have not been able to find one here in the shop. So, I went online and I ordered one, but it's going to be a while before they get here. So, uh, until then, you know, I can't terminate this lead together. So, we'll have to put it on a hold off for now. I don't want to do any of the uh, calibration and stuff until I get that resistor. But the next thing I do have to deal with is this old case. And you know the case is uh, very dirty, rusty. And you know it just needs, I thought about just cleaning it up. And uh, you know letting it go at that. But this old paint is still flaking off and it's going to continue to flake off until it's completely removed. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but there's a big old motorcycle out there in the shop running that's being worked on. I have two 1100 shadows out there that we're going through, and uh, in two days out of there, I can't get to the sandblast box. <laughs> so uh, we got to get them things out of the shop, and uh, that way I can get you the sandblaster. But anyway, uh, we'll see what we can do on it. So we're out here in the shop and what you're looking at here is the uh, blast cabinet 
and we have our chassis in there being blasted and everything shut off at the moment because this thing makes a lot of noise we'll go around here to the side this is a homemade cabinet and we use a very very fine sand this way it doesn't generate heat and doesn't warp our metal but uh, it's just about done. So we're going to turn this back on and uh, let it finish up. And then getting all this flaking paint off. Well, so all the rust is removed. All this flaking paint is gone. I opted not to take the uh, rubbers off. Because they are riveted on. The handle was riveted on, but I didn't want to risk destroying the uh, what little bit of leather um, is left. I can replace these if I have to. But uh, yeah, she's all uh, blasted, and all she needs now is a good cleaning and do a good priming and sanding, and that'll be ready for some paint. Well, a 14A is coming right along. As you can see, we pretty much got it basically back together doing some tests. And uh, I'm going to put this on a 1,000 volts. We own our AC. We have our meter zero. And I'm going to put about 110 volts into it, AC. And we'll look at the meter. Okay, we're showing it's a little over 100. Come down here to 300 volts. And we had about 110 volts. Now, if we switch to uh, 100, we're going to go just over a little bit. But our AC scale is running with no problems. Um, We'll switch over, we're going to test some DC, but we got to remember we don't have our 22 mega ohm resistor in line. Okay, we own the 30 volt DC, positive, and we can connect 10 volts to it. And you see we're almost about a volt too high. But uh, again, you know, take your mind, we don't have our 22 meg resistor in line all right so our AC and DC uh, functions are working and they're pretty pretty spot on just gonna need just a smaller bit of alignment but uh, I noticed that when we go to our own scale the manual says go to ohm scale short the leads zero to meter remove our shorted meter and then adjust our ohms adjustment for infinite and that's a little infinite mark over here looks like a little sideways eight and we're not able to achieve that so we have something in our ohm scale that's not working correctly and I do have a tube in there that is reading very weak so uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace the tubes and uh, that should take care of that this video has already gotten a little long, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and call this part one of bringing this uh, vintage uh, HP-14A back to life. So, uh, I got our 22 mega ohm resistor ordered. That should be in within a week. And I got some of these uh, clip-on nuts to replace the two that are missing. 
and I got some brass bolts coming where we can uh, mount our handle back onto the top up here. It had brass rivets and I'm not going to put rivets back in them. I'm going to go back with bolts. So we'll better put some brass bolts up there and they'll look pretty decent. So, looks like the meters came a long way. It is working. All but our ohms adjustment. We'll get that straightened out. So, in part two, we'll go through the alignment and we'll troubleshoot our ohm scale, find out what's going on there. Get our DC Pro finished up and do a final test on the DC side. And the meter should be just about ready to go. So, it won't be long. This meter will be back in service. So we'll go ahead and conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, you can always you know, show me by giving me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Everyone helps. So we thank you and we'll catch you in the next video. See you now.